Hello everyone, and welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Tuesday, January 14th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for Tuesday, the 14th of January, it does not mean it absolutely has to resonate at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and or whenever it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that moment. Yes? Okay. Um, two things. First of all, in relation to these two things, this is not the first thing, but first, before I get into the two things, first, I want to say that um, I do not have a pre-shuffle because, well, okay, technically I do, but I didn't intentionally draw cards for pre-shuffle because there's something that I want to discuss. So our pre-shuffle energies are going to be a little more of a discussion rather than an energy reading. Okay. Now getting to the two points, first and foremost, before, before anything else, well, okay, first, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. Next, the next thing I want to discuss is, um, so many of you, well, all of you that watched Morning Coffee yesterday, heard me um, mention that one of my best friend's mother has passed um, and um, I've since discussed it with her and I wanted to I wanted to give you I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about it so it's my friend Natalie um, if you've been following me for a while especially like since over the summer you would probably know of Natalie because I mean she and I she's one of my best absolutely one of my best friends um, she and I are so in sync like it, it <laughs> it's kind of scary sometimes how just like how synchronized the two of us are like we can't walk down the street together without falling into lockstep with, <laughs> with each other it's kind of it's kind of gross <laughs> sometimes but it was in fact her mother that has passed um, and so I thank you all for the kind words, the kind regards, and the prayers and the love. Um, also, I do want to share with you that a GoFundMe has been started for her, for Natalie and their fam and her family in dealing with the loss of their mother. Um, and so it, I have put the link to the GoFundMe down in the description box below. You will also be able to find the link in my uh, bio on Instagram and you I'll also um, post it on Facebook as well if anyone would be so kind as to donate whatever you can um, is helpful um, I would greatly appreciate it Natalie and her family would greatly appreciate it if you if you're feeling so inclined to help to donate anything I, we would all greatly appreciate that. Many, many blessings, many, many thanks to you. Again, the, um, the link can be found in the description box of this video, also on Facebook and also on Instagram. Yes, thank you all so very much. Um, okay, so getting into the topic, <laughs> Spirit just said the topic of contention for the day. <laughs> okay, so I don't have a pre-shuffle, but Spirit is saying, Eric, yes, you do. And here's why. I didn't intend, like I did shuffle a little bit just to get myself in the groove. It felt right to do and I, 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 sh I moved the cards around a little bit, but I did not intend to have anything to show you. And yet spirit has come through. We have judgment and it's the side of judgment where the angel is appearing before you um, and you're standing in front of the in in front of the angel in all of your naked glory, but being naked in spiritual um, definite or spiritual the spiritual meaning of nakedness is purity, getting down to the truth of your essence, no, no um, adorning nothing but you the truth of who you are and blah blah blah. Um, this is the side of the card in which we speak of activation, we speak of awakening, we speak of phoenix from the ashes risen type energy, okay? But this is the moment where the, the angel comes before you and blows the horn and basically wakes you up. Wakes you up to a cause, wakes you up to your path of, of enlightenment, it, it, whatever whatever this would represent for you in any, in any given moment, right? On the other side of the deck, we do have none other than the Two of Cups. However, it's the side of the Two of Cups where it's a nighttime scene. So something may not necessarily be fully focused. Something may not be, uh, may not necessarily be fully brought to the light. Um, 
um, phrase that I'm looking for is acknowledged consciously. Okay, it may not be fully acknowledged, you know, in the broad daylight or in the, the daylight would represent consciousness. Um, the, the nighttime could represent the subconscious. So this is something that's either hidden beneath the surface, something that you're not necessarily speaking of, speaking of something that you've not consciously acknowledged in, in the, in the physical, in the daylight. It doesn't make it any less real. Okay, that's very important to understand. Just because it may not necessarily be in the conscious light of day, it doesn't necessarily make it any less real. So this is what I want to talk about. And I almost don't, <laughs> I almost didn't or don't want to talk about this, but Spirit is really pushing me to do so. Um, it's very important that I, that I lay this out for you guys, and you'll understand why in a moment. But bear with me. This might be a little bit of a long story, but this is something that really needs to be discussed within the collective. And this is also why this happened, or I came across this, uh, last night. And which is, again, why Spirit is, is um, influencing me or pushing me to really talk about this. So last night... So I, I came across a comment on yesterday's morning coffee. And um, before I go any further, I do want to say that I am not inviting anyone to go seek out this comment and read this person the riot act or try and give this person a piece of your mind or blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Um, this person is probably going to be watching this. So I just want, I, I want to make it very clear that I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, going to lash out. I'm not super angry. I'm not going to berate you. I'm not really going to make much of an example out of you or the comment that you left. Um, this already sounds really super serious, but it's not as serious as it might come across. So just bear with me. Now, I almost didn't want to say anything about this because I don't want to feed into the negativity. I don't want to feed into negative comments. And it's not like what this, com this comment that this person left was all that bad, but it did ring a bell. And what this person said was, you know, basically in reference to the twin flame journey, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing, so, so whatever, but in reference to like the twin flame journey, they said something about how, you know, they'd been in this for like 35 years and they don't want to reconcile or they don't want to basically acknowledge, I guess, acknowledge something about the relationship, whatnot, whatever. That wasn't the most important thing. The most important thing that really struck me and actually kind of triggered me was they said, dear Eric, you know, um, something to the effect of feel what you're feeling and then get the hell out of there. And it's like, I, I had to stop for a second because I was like, what exactly makes you think I haven't tried to do so? Now, here's the thing. I did get angry when I read that last night. My ego was very much triggered because it's like, okay, well, obviously you haven't really been listening to what I've been saying or my journey here if you really think that I haven't tried to get out of it. And then I took a step back and I told my ego to calm down a little bit. And once the red started to <laughs> started to leave my eyes, then I started to I started to think about it. And I was like, okay, well maybe let's just play devil's advocate here. Maybe this person is brand new to my channel. They really haven't been following me for all for a long time. Or maybe they're not necessarily new. They just don't watch regularly or frequently or whatnot, whatever. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't matter. What matters here is, first and foremost, I want to say that it is not a good idea to come into someone's space, especially like if, if it's someone like me, like a channeler or a reader that's literally putting ourselves, like sticking our necks out there for you, sharing our stories with you and blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, only to turn around and tell them in essence to get over it. It's like, <laughs> and I already feel you saying, well, that's not what I said, but in essence, that is kind of what you said. It is. You told me to feel whatever I'm feeling and then get out of there. So basically feel whatever you're feeling and then get over it. And I understand, okay, so I'll, I'll play devil's advocate for here for you. And I'll say, okay, well, maybe that was coming from a place of, of love. And you don't, you don't want me to be, you don't want me to be, find myself in the same position that you found yourself in, but check it out. Mm, that wasn't cool. <laughs> okay. Because Okay, so let's say, let's say you haven't been following me and you don't know what I've been going through. I'll explain it to you now. I'll lay it out here for you now. I started my channel. I'm two years into this channel. Okay. I started my channel doing twin flame readings. I went that whole year. Shit hit the fan by the end of the year. Come the next year, which was 
2019, I spent damn near all of 2019 trying to run from this connection. I did everything I possibly could to forget about this person, to never have to see or speak to him again or hear from him again, to, 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 to disconnect it from it completely. And spirit wouldn't let me. Why? Because that's not the, in the contract. I made an agreement before I incarnated here to go through this with this individual. So now what I really want to say about this is it is not advisable for anybody to come into anyone's space and tell them to get over it or whatnot, whatever. I mean, that's not, that's not fair. That completely diminishes or devalues what this person is going through. And furthermore, do not ever, ever come into somebody's space and project your own negativity onto their situation. Because that is not going to help you, and it's definitely not going to help them. So, okay, you might be, this person might be in an energy of 1111. This person might be in an energy of not wanting to deal with it, not wanting to heal, not wanting to face the fact, not wanting to face whatever it is that's being triggered within them that has kept them in, okay, that's fine. But that doesn't mean that I'm still in the same space. I'm here doing the work that I need to do in order to better myself. And I know for a fact that I love this person 100%, but I also love them unconditionally. So that means that even though I haven't seen or spoken to him in over a year, first of all, the fact that I haven't seen or spoken to him in over a year, and I went through that whole year of absolutely being so hurt and hating him and angry at myself for still loving him, even though I was so mad and, and angry at the situation, angry at the people involved, blah, blah, blah. I had to go through my whole healing process surrounding that. I came out on that on the other side and I still love this man more than anything else in this world. That means something. So no, I'm not just going to feel what I'm feeling and get out of there because I'm feeling this for a reason. I'm in this position for a reason. I have met this person for a reason. I am connected to this person for a reason. And the fact that you or whomever doesn't wanna face the, the facts or face the reality of your situation does not give you an express right to come into under someone else's situation and, and spew your negativity or project your own negativity onto somebody else. Now, the other reason this had to come out, the reason, the other, the main reason why I, I, I spirit, I felt so compelled to, to speak about this and spirit really pushed me to do so was because I am in a phase right now where I cannot tolerate anyone speaking ill of myself, of my twin or the twin flame journey. I cannot tolerate that. I can't even tolerate that from my friends. So if I have friends out there that are watching me right now, that are keeping tabs on me or whatnot, whatever, don't you dare bring any of that mess from the past back into my space. Yes, I may have key keyed with you back in the day, but those days are over. And I cannot tolerate anyone speaking ill of my twin or the twin flame journey. I will shut you down. And if need be, I will cut you out of my life. But this is the other point. You cannot say that you love somebody unconditionally, but then sit there and say, well, actually, I'm only going to show them love and affection, or I'm only going to love them when they commit to me or when they apologize to me or when they show up in a certain way. Newsflash, that is conditional. Unconditional love says, I see you as you are, I love you for who you are. I see you in the space that you're in right now, and I love you. Even if that space is for far, far away from me, even if I am not involved in that space, even if I can't speak with you, I can't see you, I can't touch you, I can't hold you, I can't kiss you, I still love you. Because my love for you is unconditional. But when you put conditions on it, then you are doing the exact opposite of what this journey is meant to teach you. This journey is meant to teach you unconditional love. It is, about, it is meant to wake you up. So even if, even if this relationship is actually in the shadows right now, there is still an activation going here. 
there is still a lesson to be learned. So uh, please understand that forever, for the person that left that comment yesterday, I'm not mad at you. I'm not trying to to throw you under the bus. But this, but but you you leaving that comment triggered something that needs to be discussed. You cannot hold hate, animosity, fear, anger, resentment, and expect your twin flame situation to come together. You can't. I think I want to leave it there. I hope I, I hope I got that across correctly. Again, I'm not mad at this person, whoever left that comment, and I, I am not. This is not an open invitation for any of y'all to go digging into those comments and read this person the riot act. Leave it alone. It's been addressed. Let's just move forward. And for whomever it is that left that comment, I welcome you into our, our circle. I welcome you into our environment, our community, but please do not project your negativity or your anger or your fear on me or anyone else around here. Please do not do that. And that goes for everybody. All right. With that said, <laughs> let's get into the to today's message. Yeah? Cool. As if that wasn't a message enough. <laughs> okay. Let's get into the energy reading for the day, yes? Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, January 14th. Yes, January 14th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, guys, I'm gonna give this five shuffles. You know, the color for the collective is still yellow. And I kind of want to say that's a good thing. It kind of feels like um, a reshaping. What I'm hearing is a revamping of masculine energy. A realigning of it, too. That sounds nice. That's... Ugh. This is four for the collective, January 14th, 2020, and five. All righty, kids. Let's get into this. What would you like to discuss with us today, please, Spirit? What would you like to discuss with us today, Tuesday, January ooh, 14th, 2020? I'm going to do one more poll here. Just one more. And then we'll see what we've got. I know, yes, there's a number of cards on the table, but my eyes are closed. So I don't know what they are yet. Tuesday, January 14th, 2020. Okay. Okay. Ooh, they, they said that's enough, and then like 10 more cards fell out. Oh, look, it's the lovers, you guys. Well, 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 would you look at that? There's judgment again. And on the other side is the Six of Pentacles. This is literally what I was just talking about in my rant before we even started talk, dealing with the cards. There is a rebirth there is an awakening that is in the process of happening. And you have got to learn how to be reciprocal. Even if this person doesn't speak to you, doesn't talk to you, isn't treating you well, it doesn't mean that you can't still hold love for them. You have to understand that hurt people hurt people. Whatever so however someone is reacting to you in their life is a direct reflection of what's going on within. It really doesn't have anything to do with you. So to sit there and hold resentment for someone 
Yes, because they've treated you wrong. They've treated you poorly. Okay, that's fine. But you have to start understanding that it's coming from a place of their own trauma. And feeding into that negative energy of, well, you hurt me, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I hate you. I'm going to hold resentment for you. I'm going to hold resentment for you for the next 20, 30 years. Come on. I mean, if that's, if, again, I'm not trying to pass judgment on you. I'm not trying to say that you're wrong. And I'm not trying to tell you that you're going through your healing process wrong. No. But what I am saying is, we're here to learn in this journey. We are here to learn reciprocity, unconditional love. And if you want to see change in the world, you have to be that change. You cannot stand there on your soapbox and demand change from everyone while harboring the same old shit. You can't. If you want to see change in the world, then you have to be that change yourself. So if you're dealing with someone that has treated you poorly, don't stoop down to their level and start throwing that energy right back at them. Rise above it. <sighs> okay. Ooh. So we have a number of things in reverse here. We do have the lovers with the King of Wands, which would be the Divine Masculine, the Nine of Swords, okay. When we have the Hanged Man, the Tower, and the, and the Magician, all of this is reversed, but we also have that with the Knight of Swords. Masculine energy. We could be talking about the Divine Masculine, your Divine Masculine counterpart. We could be talking about the inner masculine energies within you. There has been, an, ever since, you know, the 1st of January, ever since, not even the 1st, the 31st, New Year's Eve, I've been channeling this energy of someone within the masculine collective or maybe your inner masculine energy. This could be a career move. This could be uh, just something new that you're looking to create for yourself here. But there's some, there's some energy of wanting to take some sort of action, wanting to move in a new direction, moving towards something that with this lover's card here, if it's not like a twin flame or divine counterpart or just a romantic situation, it is an energy of moving forward in terms of something that is more fulfilling to you, something that's really calling to you, something that really rings true to your heart. And yet you're facing blockages or barriers but these blockages and barriers here, you see, it's the Nine of Swords, and it's the depiction where this person is sitting on their bed, and they're looking out the window, and they've got all these Nine Swords standing in their way. So it's as if someone is dreaming of something, wanting to move forward with something, wanting to make some sort of move, wanting to send some sort of message, wanting to take some sort of action. And yet their fears are stopping them. And then look at what I just saw here. Look at look at in the, the, the corner. You see in that corner on the on this side of the card, right here. You see that figure standing there? That's some creepy shit. But that's your what I'm feeling like, that is your ego. Or that is some sort of negative entity that's uh, that's standing over your shoulder saying, Yeah, you can't do this. You can't do this. You're not this isn't right for you. You have to let that go. You have, to, you have got to stop listening to that. Because that energy is only going to keep you down. It is fear-based. And it is feeding off of your fear. You are being called towards something here. There has been a rebirth. There, I'm hearing it's a call to action. But there has been a death and now a rebirth here. And that's also kind of being shown in the Hanged Man and the Tower in reverse. Now, what I'm getting with the Hanged Man and the Tower in reverse is that there is an energy of you've reached some sort of enlightenment. You've passed some sort of test. You've gone through some sort of big shakeup. And yet something, it's like you're not putting what you've learned into use, into practice here. You have the magician, which is also in reverse. The magician is giving me an energy of feeling stuck or feeling like you're incapable or you're inadequate or you just can't do it. You don't know how to do it. And yet with this Knight of Swords energy, there's this feeling of just wanting to just rush in. 
and communicate something. I really do feel like with this magician in reverse and the knight of swords in reverse, it's like you are, it's almost as if you're keeping yourself at bay because you don't want to seem too hasty. <laughs> I just heard you also, maybe you don't want to seem too thirsty. Okay, whatever, but This is very interesting. <clears throat> okay. Um, that's what I'm getting with that so far. What I do want to do, I want to move forward. I want to move on to the clarification because I'm kind of, I'm even having trouble deciphering this, really kind of understanding what this is because this feels contradictory in many ways. It's like you want to take the action, but you don't know how. I'm hearing stuck and stagnant. Let's just, let's just get into some clarification here. Let's look a deep, little deeper into what these energies actually are. Maybe that'll help us understand what's going on. I was just thinking back I was just thinking back to yesterday's reading in which it was talking about really like really relinquishing control and that's what the magician in reverse could be it's like okay but you're letting the universe I'm hearing Jesus take the wheel like you're letting the universe take the wheel here and there's just like this energy of with the knight of swords here there's an energy of just wanting maybe I want to say so desperately to communicate with someone, to talk to someone. And it feels like it's coming through as the Knight of Swords because it's like it's been pent up. And now it's like almost bursting out of you. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Give this one more shuffle. With the Hermit, I'm oh, not the Hermit. <laughs> Oh my God, not the hermit, the hanged man. With the hanged man in reverse, I'm hearing that you really, you've, you've reached some sort of enlightenment that you need. With the tower here, there has been already been some sort of shakeup and yet you're still feeling like, what do I do? What is this piece spirit? It's a little deeper into these images here. Page of Wands. <laughs> yeah, this is about communicating somehow, sending some sort of message. Oh, there it is, the Ace of Cups. Uh, I'm hearing sending a message of love, a desire to be together. That's what I just heard. Seven of Pentacles in reverse, five of wands upright. And the, oh, fuck, the Hierophant. Okay. You have the seven of pentacles in reverse here with the five of wands. So to me, this is speaking of, com it's like you're completely scrapping something. It's like you're, it's, it's almost as if, no, that's not really it either. It, it, it could be like you're completely scrapping something and starting something new, starting something over but also the energy that I'm getting from this is like, it's almost as if you haven't learned your lesson here and you're still battling with the sense of old stuff. Like whatever the Hierophant would represent for you. It's as if the indoctrination that you've been through in the past is like coming back up, trying to distract you. Ace of Wands, yep. The Ace of Wands is underneath the Hierophant. And you have the Ace of Cups here with the Page of Wands. So Page of Wands is about sending a message. I mean, all of the pages can can be seen as sending a message, but the Page of Wands is like, is is the one, one page that is like super associated with sending some sort of message. And it's usually a passionate one. With the Ace of Cups here, there's definitely an energy of wanting to send a message of love to someone. 
but it's almost as if the patriarchy is something about the patriarchy or something about the past or your indoctrination or what you've experienced in the past, what you've learned in the past is stopping you. It's stopping you in your tracks in a way. Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Mm. I want to get a little bit more here. Why is this Seven of Pentacles in reverse, please, Spirit? Please help us understand. Why is this Seven of Pentacles in reverse, Spirit? Why is this Seven of Pentacles in reverse, here? Oh, boy. You have the Emperor now. <laughs> With the Ten of Cups here, I did see it. Yep, Ten of Cups, Death, Page of Wands, Queen of Wands. Not the Page of Wands, excuse me, Knight of Wands, Queen of Wands. Okay, all right, so this is, this is in fact confirming here that um, that the Seven of Pentacles in reverse is an energy of creating a completely new crop, like a completely new harvest, like completely scrapping the old situation, the old harvest, the old seeds that have been planted in certain ways and starting anew, 100% starting anew. You have the Ten of Cups, you have the Death card, you have the Knight of Wands, and you have the Queen of Wands. So, and the overall energy is of the Emperor. Now the Emperor and the Hierophant are giving me, are also speaking to energies of some sort of, um, Oh, wow. Okay. Of commitment. And that's kind of what I was getting to. But I didn't really mention it. Um, there is like there is an internal battle here in terms of how to go about this next phase or how to go about a commitment. And then you have all of this. There is a transformation that has happened here because of love. Because of love, I know you better. Right? Good old Janet. <laughs> but Ten of Cups has influenced some sort of death, transformation. And now there's an energy of wanting to come in passionately, send a message to the Queen of Wands, the counterpart to this King of Wands up here. There is a re-identification that's happened. Page of Wands. And thus, that's in service, that re-identification is in service of love. But also with this Ace of Cups, it's not just love that you have for another person that you wanna convey, it's love for yourself. Oh, now, okay, now I also see, see, it doesn't, now that I really see it for what it is, it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> the seven of pentacles in reverse is also an energy of, you've thought, you've contemplated this enough. It's time to get moving. It's time to take action. But then you have this five of swords, five, oh, well, yeah, okay, five of swords. It could be the five of swords too, but you have this five of wands energy that's the inner conflict that's like, no, no, I'm not ready yet. No, no, you have to do this first. You have to do that first. It's like, no, you're ready. Just get moving. Start taking some action. Start planting seeds. Start doing something. Be in control of your domain. Be the master of your own domain. Make some sort of executive decision for yourself. I don't know. I, st I mean, I feel like I could sit here and pull cards on that forever, but I want to move forward. I want to I wanna clarify these energies here for you. The lovers, the king of wands, but the nine of swords. Your illusions, king of wands, your illusion, your fear is an illusion and it's getting in the way. It is keeping you trapped. It's keeping you in a space of only dreaming about taking some sort of action that you want to take. There is an awakening here. There is enlightenment. I mean, that's kind of what I'm seeing in this lover's card here, but let's, I'm going to shuffle this. And then I want to get a little bit of 
clarification on the lovers, the king of wands, and the nine of swords. I just want to look a little deeper into these energies here for you. Okay. The Empress, shut the front door. <laughs> Oh, the Three of Swords, but the Three of Swords came out in reverse. Wow. The Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Wands. Holy moly. The Sun, oh my goodness. And the Hermit. Aw, oh, see, there's the Hermit. There's that Virgo. <laughs> oh, I love that Virgo. Anyway, um, all right, look. Masculine, king of wands. Your empress is over the heartbreak. Or at least she's getting over it. Times are changing. Union is on the way. The sun is shining. I mean, you could even see this as the wheel of destiny or the wheel of karma. It's like, you two were, I mean, it's just like what I said in the beginning you know, in my whole rant that I was going through. It's like, you guys met each other for a reason. And yes, the, the, the journey may have been rough and hard and, and, and whatever, but it was all meant to help you guys heal. And so if you're in this place, like with the comment that was left last night, someone that's saying they, they don't want to, I mean, I don't remember exactly the words that they were taught, that they mentioned, but it was like they didn't want to reconcile or anything like that. Okay, but you're holding yourself in that pattern for whatever reason. I'm not trying to diminish your reasons for doing so. I mean, it's your life, do what you want, but I, can all, I can't help but feel like you're just delaying your own healing and just because you may go through some sort of healing and come out of it on the other side seeing things completely different that differently that doesn't even necessarily mean that you're going to end up with this person you've got to follow your intuition there but what's really important is the healing the empress with the three of swords in reverse now also this Empress energy is, give, is giving off an energy of nurturance, unconditional love, giving you the energetic space to go through your healing process, to get over the heartbreak. Okay. Destiny, times are changing. I mean, for whomever this King of Wands is, whether this is you or your Divine Masculine, and even if you're not on the Twin Flame journey, if this resonates for you in a different way, like career-wise, like you're looking to make a new career move, blah, blah, or whatever, whatever it is you, that you're passionate about, that you have your eyes set on, okay, that you're, you're biding your time with, it's going to work out for you. You might be in this holding pattern right now with the Empress energy in trying to heal, get over some sort of heartbreak, some pain from the past or whatnot, whatever, but... Ultimately, the hermit here is an energy of needing to walk a solitary path or being truthful to yourself, true to yourself, going within and finding the answers within. Also, what I'm getting with this hermit energy in relation to this king of wands here, whomever, someone that wants to take, wants to, I want to say, take a leap of faith, but wants to take some sort of action, your answers as to when this could happen or when you should do this are within. I feel like some of you are relying on some sort of external cue, maybe from your counterpart, um, but I'll, I'll specifically I'm getting, it's like from friends or something like that. It's kind of what it feels like. It's like you're waiting for some sort of high sign or some sort of acknowledgement from like, or like some sort of like green light from like your friends or something like that. I, Take that with a grain of salt. Um, that may not be relevant to your situation, but if it is, the message there is like, mm, you really should be taking your cues from within. That's where the true answers lie.
Okay. I want to get some closing advice here from Spirit. And then we'll get our Oracle Guidance, which I actually feel like is coming from the Crystal Mandala today. But closing message from Spirit, advice and guidance. I'm going to give this one more shuffle here. <laughs> the Magician with the King of Swords. <laughs> the High Priestess. Mm. Overall energy of the King of... The Queen of Cups. Wow. What I want to say with this Queen of Cups is she is, in fact, holding space for you. Whether you want to believe it or not, or whether you want to recognize it or not, but actually spirit is asking you to recognize it. King of Swords. Spirit is asking you to be honest with yourself. You have the magician and you have the high priestess with this King of Swords. So what spirit is saying here is to be objective, to be honest with yourself, and start taking action in terms of situations or, or things that you know you want to be moving towards. Allow the universe to guide you. High Priestess, trust your intuition. Trust the signs that you're getting. Trust the synchronicities that you're getting. Trust the downloads that you're receiving. Trust the moments of inspiration where it's like you don't know how you should know something, but you know it anyway. You need to trust that. As you stay in this space with the King of Swords of mental clarity, honesty, truthfulness, integrity, authenticity, whatever, but as you stand in that space of having a clear and balanced mind, you will get information on what moves to take from the High Priestess. Do you see how with the Magician energy here, he's in that pose of as above, so below. That's in between the High Priestess and the King of Swords. The King of Swords being you in this three-dimensional physical incarnation, right? The High Priestess is your higher self or the universe, however you want to describe it. And the Magician in the center between these two is channeling the energy, the wisdom, the knowledge, the direction, the actions to take from the higher self. But then there's this King of Swords. In some cases, there's this King of Swords in which... And this King of Swords has been coming out quite frequently lately, and I think I may have been missing the mark a little bit on what this King of Swords actually means, but this King of Swords can actually represent someone being too logical. Way too logical. You know what? I want to look into that King of Swords a little bit more. I'm going to use the Golden Universal Tarot for it. Okay. Someone is being extremely logical overly logical to a detriment while the other person is sitting here holding this cup of love just wishing you'd speak to them in some cases but they're not going to get overly emotional about it they're not going to get dramatic about it because ultimately they know you're going through something and they just want the best for you and they're sitting here in this unconditionally loving space but man they would love to talk to you but it's okay if you're not ready to at this time. That's what I'm getting from this Queen of Cups. I'm here, you're being overly logical. You're being too stern. You're being too hard on yourself. It's almost as if Spirit is saying here through this King of Swords that, yeah, you may be in this King of Wands energy, but the King of Swords energy is stopping you in your tracks saying, you're not lovable. There's no way you could honestly be what this person really truly needs you to be. Your thoughts are getting in the way. I want, to put, I want to look a little bit deeper into this King of Swords energy, please, Spirit. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, but would you look at that? Four of Wands is now at the bottom of the deck. The Seven of Pentacles has come back out again. You have Justice, the Nine of Pentacles, the Four of Swords, and... Oh! Oh! <laughs> well, would you look at that? The Queen of Wands. Huh. Wow. I'll start here. What I'm getting from this Queen of Wands energy is this individual wants you, is passionate, is fired up, is ready to go, is ready to do the damn thing, and is sitting here in his or her power, just manifesting, being in that magnetic space to attract that which it is that he or she truly wants. And let me tell you, King of Swords, no doubt about it. She wants you. Okay. I'm hearing you need to see this for what it truly is, King of Swords. Okay. See, okay, so for some of you, you're in this really, really logical place because you're wondering if this individual here that you feel is pulling you in is doing so from a place of codependency and she's not he or she they're not they're doing it from a place of independence because we have an energy here where somebody has really gone through their process of figuring out what it is they truly want what it is they truly desire who they even are because the queen of wands is well aware of who she is and what she wants and <laughs> ain't afraid of it and also is not going to back down but this individual took the time to find a sense of independence here. And what they've decided or what they've come to terms with is they want you. You have justice with the seven of pentacles. It's time to harvest. It's almost as if this individual is just standing here waiting for the vines to ripen, is what I'm hearing. It's like justice has aligned you two together. You two, I mean, look at this, you guys. The King of Wands came out the first time, and then the Queen of Wands has now come out twice. This person is in alignment. You two are in alignment with each other, but then this King of Swords energy is standing in the way saying, mm, that can't be possible, or that's not quite right, or something isn't right here, but overly critical energy. And then you have the Four of Wands underneath the deck. I mean, this is a union card, guys. This is a union energy. This is happiness, tranquility. This is cause for celebration, yes, but the work is not done yet. Don't rest on your laurels. There's still more to build. But you've got this foundation down pretty damn good, I'd say. I wonder for, for whomever this is for, it's like I'm hearing the masculine is being overly critical here. And it's not of you. It's of him, his or, him or herself. I'm hearing mas the masculine energy is stopping you in your tracks. There may even be an energy of too much perfectionism. Okay, I'm going to stop there because now I'm starting to confuse myself <laughs> the more I try to explain this. I hope this is making sense for whomever this is meant for. But let's get, let's close this out and get our Oracle guidance for today. Yes? Oracle guidance. 
Last shuffle. All right, kids, let's see what your oracle guidance is for today. Ooh. Card number 38. I love this card. First of all, three and eight boil down to none other than an 11. But this is goddess Lakshmi and Dendric Agate. Her golden grace. Beautiful. Ooh. Huh? And it does match my nail. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Okay. Her golden grace. We bring you the empowerment of her golden grace. Divine Mother Lakshmi, who brings blessings of enlightenment and prosperity, beauty and good fortune, smiles upon you now. Open your mind to the reality of divine generosity without limit. Open your heart to feel worthy of her love. When you allow her to grant you bounty, to bless you with her golden grace, she is empowered to shine her divinity, be her divine beauty, excuse me, in the world to heal, uplift, inspire, and enchant the souls in need. This is really speaking to this King of Swords energy here. It's like you have a golden opportunity right in front of you to receive some sort of grace, good fortune, beauty, prosperity, whatnot, whatever, and yet an overly critical nature is not allowing you to let that in. It's almost as if you're not allowing yourself to cross that bridge or to cross that threshold or to walk through that door of opportunity because for some reason you feel like you're not good enough or you've not, you haven't completed your lesson yet or you haven't done that. I mean, You've sown some really great seeds here. Look, seven of wands, I'm sorry, seven of pentacles in reverse, five of wands. It's like you've sown some really great seeds and you have a harvest right in front of you. And yet you're choosing, you're conflicted about taking it, about harvesting it. Seven of pentacles now with justice. I mean, you worked hard for this, haven't you? So what's wrong with enjoying the fruits of your labor. This King of Swords energy, man. Someone's being overly critical of themselves, not the other person, of themselves. Let me see if I can read a little bit more, if there's some more messages here. In this... Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. If you are feeling as though there are limits in your life that you would like to transcend, perhaps in particular any limits you feel regarding abundance, prosperity, and good fortune, and spiritual enlightenment, then you will be open to the message this oracle gives you now. The Golden Mother includes you in her plan to spread the bounty of life throughout the world. As you receive from her, you will be empowered to share her vibrant grace with others. Open your heart to her golden smiling face and allow love's abundance to fill your world. If in your heart you have felt there are better times ahead, even though you may not have a particular reason for it other than a feeling in your heart, this oracle brings you confirmation. Even if you are yet to realize the touch of her golden grace in your life, you shall do so. The rising sun of her beauty, I'm sorry, of her golden beauty shines shall shine upon you, excuse me, ushering in a time of love, prosperity, and peace. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, again, if you would like to donate to uh, Natalie, uh, the Nira family um, to help with, you know, the passing of um, Mama Nira, then please, I encourage you to do so. Link can, can be found in the description box of this video, and also it's posted on Facebook, and it's in the uh, my bio on Instagram. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.